antibiotics, mechanism of action, and some general overview. So let's review it again. So if you're talking about the cell wall, penicillin, cephalosporin, vancomycin, and if you're talking about the cell membrane, you're talking about polymexin. If you're talking about the folic acid, you're talking about the sulfur and the bactrim. If you're talking about the nucleic acid synthesis, then you're talking about the DNA gyrase, the fluoroquinolone, the cipro, the metro, which is flagell, or the RNA polymerase, RNA polymerase, the R got R, so that is the R of the refembrim, protein synthesis, the theory S or the 50S, the theory will be something cheaper, like the, something treat Lyme's disease, or we use it frequently in open fractures. So that's a tetracycline or aminoglucosides like gentamicin. And if you're talking about 50, that's, oh, that's a bigger number. That must be more expensive. The clindamycin, we don't use that in everybody at the beginning. So the clindamycin and maybe uh, erythromycin uh, and linozolid. So if we take the group that work on the cell wall, which is penicillin, vancomycin, and cephalosporin. What's important about them? It inhibits the cell wall synthesis by blocking the cross-linking. So this is the story about the cross-linking. There is a protein called the penicillin binding protein. It's involved in the cross-linking. The beta-lactam, like penicillin and cephalosporin, have a ring that binds to the enzyme and it prevents the cell wall synthesis by preventing cross-linking. So when the penicillin binds to that protein, that protein cannot cross-link and the cell wall will not be done properly. So when the beta-lactam inhibits the cell wall synthesis, this will cause damage to the bacterial cell. So if you are allergic to penicillin or cephalosporin, you will give clindamycin. Or you may give vancomycin if MRSA is suspected or encountered. Vancomycin is the essential treatment for MRSA. It has very limited activity against the biofilm and very poor bone penetration and less effective against methicillin-sensitive staph aureus. If you are allergic to clindamycin, you will give Cipro. How about the staph? How did it develop resistance to penicillin? What is the gene involved? It will be penicillin binding protein, 2A, MECA, M-E-C-A. This is how MRSA develops. So the bacteria produces an altered penicillin binding protein that can do the cross-linking, but it has no affinity to beta-lactam antibiotics. It means that it will render the bacteria resistant to the effect of penicillin and cephalosporin. Vancomycin is used in these cases. Then how the bacteria acquire this resistant gene? It can be done by transformation from one bacteria to the other, or it can be done through a plasmid. There are three main mechanisms by which the resistant gene is transferred. Conjugation, transformation, and transduction. There is another mechanism by which the bacteria will produce an enzyme that will inactivate the drug before it reaches the bacteria. This is a beta-lactamase enzyme which is capable of destroying the beta-lactam antibiotics. 
So the beta lactam ring of the antibiotic is destroyed and will not be able to bind to the receptor on the wall. The polymaxin will increase the cell wall permeability. Folic acid synthesis inhibitors, which is sulfa and bactrim. Nucleic acid synthesis. Either you work on the DNA or you work on the RNA. When you work on the DNA, you got two. And you got one on the RNA. So basically, the nucleic acid synthesis got only three. DNA2, RNA1. So the DNA, either DNA dry rays, like the guanidons, which is cipro. Cipro got problems, like Achilles tendon rupture. It may have a black label. Don't use it above the age of 60 years old female with osteoporosis that are in prednisone because it can rupture the Achilles tendon. It also decreases the fracture healing. Don't give it to children. It may affect the cartilage growth. Just remember it inhibits the DNA gyrase. The metro or the flagell is a bactericidal. It creates a free oxygen radicals, which is metabolic byproduct. It disrupts the DNA. This is the second one that disrupt or work on the DNA. It can be used for C. diff. So the two drugs that work to inhibit the DNA synthesis, which are the cipro and metro, are connected to clindamycin. If you are allergic to clindamycin, you can use cipro. And if we create C. diff by clindamycin, you can treat that by the flagell or the metro. Now we go to the second part of the nucleic acid synthesis, which is the RNA polymerase inhibition. And that is R is R, RNA is rifampin. Rifampin will work against staph and the microbacterium TB. Sometimes the staph aureus will be phagocytosed by the macrophages and becomes intracellular and the antibiotic can reach it because it's inside the cells. The rifampin is very good against the intracellular phagocytosed staph inside the macrophages. Rifampin usually is not used alone, but it is synergistic to antibiotics, especially in patients with MRSA or MESA infections. It got a great bone penetration, and it is bactericidal. Now we go to the protein synthesis, and this is either 30S or 50S. The template uh, for the process of making the protein is the messenger RNA, and it's created by RNA polymerase. Antibiotics really target the 30S and the 50S subunits of the ribosomes. Ribosomes make proteins. It is a protein-making machine. So it will take the messenger RNA and translate it into protein. The messenger RNA, it's a copy with all the information. It goes to the ribosomal subunits, which is 30S and 50S. At that point, the transfer RNA carried amino acids in unique sequence to create the polypeptide chain. The 30S, the doxy, and the amino glucosides. The amino glucosides, like the gentamicin, for example, and uh, will give you problems in the ears and in the kidney, autotoxicity and renal toxicity. Now, the other one that affect 30S protein synthesis is tetracycline, which is avoided in children less than 12 years of age. It can give you impaired growth. It also can give you 
teeth discoloration. The dark sea is a very important one because we use it to treat Lyme disease. Now we move to the last section, which is the 50S. That is clindomycin, erythromycin, linozolid, chloramphenicol. Clindomycin is important because it can cause pseudomembranous colitis, which is the C. diff. Also, you got to watch people that uh, take comedin and clindamycin. So clindamycin can wipe out the bacterial flora from the gut, so you don't make a lot of vitamin K, so you don't need a lot of comedin to interfere with the small amount of vitamin K that the body is formed, so the NR will be really high if you give the standard dose of comedin. So you got to know what kind of antibiotics the patient is getting, and you got to adjust it. So clindamycin create crap. It's a high maintenance. You don't use it at the first line. That's why it is 50. Use it if you're allergic to penicillin or ANSEF. But it creates the C. diff, which is the crap, and then the DNA antibiotics will come to help to clean the crab of the clindamycin. Cipro, if you are allergic to clindamycin, or flagell, if you create the C. diff. Clindamycin will achieve the highest concentration in bone. Another one that works in the 50S it, the erythromycin. Watch out comedin interaction with erythromycin. The line of solid is used in resistant gram positives. Another one can be chloramphenicol. Watch out aplastic anemia. Another point of interest when you add antibiotic to the cement, the maximum effect will be at two weeks and no effect at eight weeks. Pentum Valentine Leucocidin, PVL. It is an important topic because it is a toxin produced by Staph aureus. This toxin may cause necrotizing fasciitis or a lot of necrosis of the tissue. It is found in more of the community acquired MRSA. It got more complex infection. It got more incidence of DVT and PE. Thank you for listening. That was a tough lecture, but I hope you enjoyed it. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.